Now let's look at the problem of um, how to find covariance and correlation coefficient. Okay, so here let me see this is coefficient of two random variables when their joint PMF is given. So try to recall the definition of covariance. So covariance is given by this um, um, by this formula over here. So we have the expected value of x, y and minus the product of the expected value of x and y. Let me choose a smaller brush. So let me go back and we choose a smaller brush. All right, um, that's what we're going to do. Since we already have the marginal PMF, so we can easily find the expected value of x, right? And we multiply the values by their probability. So it's 10 times 0.36 plus 20 times 0.28 and plus um, 30 times 0.36 because um, that's the PMF of X. So we multiply them up and 3.6 and plus 5.6 and then um, and then plus over here we have 10.8. I think that's what we have. If we add them up and we have exactly 20. And the same thing here, if we calculate the expected value of y, then we use the y's value, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by corresponding probabilities. So we have 1 times 0.4 plus 2 times 0.2 and plus 3 times 0.4. And I think we should have 2 over here. Okay, that's what we have. And now how can we calculate the expected value of x, y? Remember, x times y as x times y over here is a random variable. And we're going to see what kind of values it can take by looking at the joint PMF. And, and also look at the values of the probability, right? So x times y, we can look at this um, y over here and x. So it can be 10. So let's try to do this. 10, 20, and 30, right? 10, 20, and 30. That's possible. Now, if we multiply 2 by 10, we have another 20, so we just remember that. And then um, 2 by 20, this is going to be 40, is also possible. This 2 times 20. And then 2 times, six, two times 30 is going to be 60. Okay. And then 1 times now we have 3 times 10 is 30 again, but we have it over here. So now 3 times 20 is 60. So the last one we have over here is 90. Okay. So now we are going to try to find the probabilities of these values. x times y is equal to 10. That can only happen if y is 1 and x is 10. So we have this part is 0.28, right? But 20, we need to have two probabilities add up. So y is 1, x is um, 20, and um, y is 2, and x is 10. So it's going to be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.08, and that's going to be 0 0.12. And how about 30? We also have 1 times 30 and 3 times 10. So we will have 0 0.4 and 0 0.4, that's going to be 0 0.08. Okay, so look at 40. That can only happen if y is 2 and x is so we have again and 0.12 and 60 we have again two cases y can be 2 x can be 30 or y is 3 and x is going to be 20 so we add them up and this probabilities are over here 0.8 plus 0.04 and that's going to be 0.12 90 that means 3 times 30 that's the only possibility so it's 0.28 
and we can try to uh, briefly look to see if the sum is going to be 1. Otherwise, we don't have a probability. So we can add them up. It's over here. First 2 will give us 4. And then over here 2 again. So we have 6. And here is 4 again. It's 0.4 again. So it's going to be 1. So that's the 1. Now find out what's going to be the expected value of x y right and then value multiplied by the probability so we're going to do that 10 times 0.28 is going to be 2.8 and plus 20 times 0.12 it's going to be uh, 2.4 and the next one again is going to be 2.4 and the next one is going to be 4.8 just multiply the values by their corresponding probabilities and the next one over here is going to be 7.2 and the last one is the largest one and we need to um, try to calculate it and that's going to be um, 25.2 I think that's yeah it's going to be 25.2 because we can see 8 times 9 is 72 then remember 7 then that's yeah, that's, that's it. And if we add them up, and then this is what we have. So we have 2.8. Let's try. So this is going to be 2.8 plus um, 4.8. And then this is going to be um, plus over here. This is going to be 11 and 12 over here. And then this is going to be... Um, 25.2 okay so we will have um so i th think this is going to be all together um we will have Let's try to add it up, and then this is going to be here again. We will have, let's add up these two first, and then it's going to be 14.8, and plus over here, this is going to be 30. So we end up with 44.8. I hope this is correct. Okay, and then what do we do? So now we have the covariance. So the covariance, we say C O V of X Y. This covariance is going to be equal to 44.8 and minus 20 times 2, which is 40. So we have 4.8. Okay. So that's the covariance. Now how to find out the correlation coefficient. Let's look at this one over here. We first remember the formula. So the correlation coefficient, we use the row over here, is the covariance of x, y and divided by the square root of the variance of x and times the variance of y. And that's what we have. So we need to calculate both variance of x and y. So we need to calculate these um, variance first. Remember the formula for variance, v of x, and that's going to be um, the expected value of x squared and minus e of x squared, right? That's what we have. So now we find out what's going to be the expected value of x squared. We have done these calculations. So that's going to be 10 squared, which is 100. And the probability we look at is 0.36 and plus 20 squared and then times 0.38 and then plus 30 squared and times what we have. The last one is again 
6. So we end up with the following. It's going to be 100 times 0.36 and that's going to be 36. And plus 4 times 28, that's going to be 2 and 112. And then the last one is 900 times 0.36 and that's going to be 324. So if we add all these things up, we will have exactly 576. We have 400. And 72. Okay, that's what we have. And then, and then what we have? Uh, we will have the variance of x, which is 472 minus 20 squared, and that's gonna be 72. Okay, and we do the same thing to find the variance of y but it's going to be easier. So let me move it over here. The variance of y is going to be 1 squared times 0.4 and plus 2 squared times 0.2 and plus 3 squared times um, 0.4 again. And that's going to be 0.4 plus 0.8 and then plus 3.8 and that's going to be 4.8 right and then oh we need to subtract also e of y squared so minus 4 we have over here minus 4 okay and that's going to be 0.8 okay so now what do we do we now multiply, so what's going to be Vx times Vy, and that's going to be 72 times 0.8. That's going to be 57.6, I believe. Yeah, that's what we have. And if we take the square root, if we take the square root of v of x and v of y, that's going to be square root of 57.6, and that's approximately, um, we try to 57.6 and take the square root, so that's about 7.7.5 7 okay that's what we have and then what then we have the correlation coefficient which is the covariance we already calculated it's going to be 4.8 over 7.59 and that's going to be approximately 4.8 divided by 7.59 um, is 0.6363. Okay, so that's how we calculate covariance and correlation coefficients. Now remember, if x, y, they are independent ones. If x, y, they are independent. If they're independent then we know that e x y x times y is going to be the same thing as e x times e y right and that will give us that the covariance is going to be always zero so the covariance of x y is going to be zero if x y independent In general, the covariance is between 1 and negative 1. If it's 0, then we say the 
correlation coefficient is zero, but it doesn't mean that x, y, they are independent. We know independence is a very strong condition. All right, and that is all about the discrete case.